Are you gonna oh do God, a what's what's up? Up? It's how to do it. What's up guys, it's Kicker. I'm here with my beautiful girlfriend, Stitch. And today we're gonna talk about A Thousand and Three Autumns. Or Volume Three of A Thousand Autumns, for short. <laughs> so good news about Volume Three. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I had a really hard time recommending Thousand Autumns before reading this volume, just because personally, I'm a romance girly. Mm -hmm. I'm in Danme to read about boys doing questionable things, but ultimately for falling in love. And it's really <laughs> hard to get behind the potential for romance between Sun Chao and Yan Mushi in these first two volumes because Yan Mushi is a jerk, mm. like constantly, over and over again. So things are starting to look up a little in this volume. I can kind of see it. I can see the potential. Okay. So I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited to introduce you to some of the hopefulness that this brings us to. But let's start with where we left off. Do you remember at all how volume two ended? I don't really. That's okay. <laughs> it was only the most crushing betrayal ever. Oh yeah, he <laughs> sold him to the prostitute. Yeah, well, okay. Or, uh, he sold him to the, the brothel guy who like also kills prostitutes. Yeah, he's this evil demonic cultivator who's, his whole thing is like, I'm super fucked up and mm. I will fuck you up in all sorts of horrible, grotesque ways and it's sexual ways. It was just awful. Um, so he betrays him, and then Sun Chao is like, just kidding, I'm going to like pull the grenade on my core and just like absolutely self-detonate. Now he has no martial arts, but turns out have like getting rid of his core and starting over from scratch, which is usually imp impossible to do, is actually the secret to using these secret strategy cultivation scrolls that everyone's been after for like the first two volumes. Okay. Okay, he's like started over from scratch and realized that like by starting off fresh with like the knowledge of these scrolls in his head already from like previous hijinks, he's able to kind of rebuild like in a newer, stronger way. Whereas other people, even the few, select few who have like found these scrolls and read them, like aren't reaching their full potential because they're using an existing core. I see. So it's kind of like it was a sweet deal for him after all. He's coming back from the ashes. Love that for him. So let's get going into volume three. Finally things get better for Shen Chao. The rest of the nation is in flames but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah though no, things get definitely get worse for everyone but Shen Chao but I have no complaints. Let's get the most important question out of the way. Does the horse have a name? <laughs> Does anything <laughs> bad happen to the horse? The horse doesn't have a name, unfortunately. Um, if you don't think too much about it, the horse is probably fine. I'm gonna be real with you though, horse ran away during a sandstorm. So, oh. I don't know, honestly. We'll just assume that the horse is fine and reaches some sort of <laughs> oasis in the Gobi Desert somewhere. Or ran back home, wherever that was. It's actually in the sandstorm scene of Heaven Official's Blessing, really deep in the distance, you can see there's a horse. <laughs> exactly. So, nameless horse is doing fine, no worries. Okay, so next slide. <laughs> Just as a, a kind of a recap where we're at, so Sun Chao's power battery of where he's at in cultivation like versus his former glory, he's at about 50% right now. Okay. So anytime he's out there like beating someone's ass, you just gotta know he's only at 50% power right now. He's like kind of barely holding his own compared to what he's used to. Okay. Um, also, he's still blind. Like he's still like <laughs> nearsighted by day and at night he's like completely clueless. Okay. So that doesn't seem to be really connected to like his cultivation progress so far. He's just struggling. He is not the love of your life! He is literally just the guy! <laughs> Hit him with your car! This is how <gasps> I feel about Sun Chao making the decision to try to save Yan Wuxi from an ambush from the five top martial artist cultivators in the realm. <laughs> just okay? let him die! Just let him die! Let someone else hit him with their car! Like. It's fine. Yeah. Don't worry, baby girl. The world's better off without him. Didn't he also betray him? Yeah. That's the thing. Okay, so Yang Wuxi, last volume, like totally betrays him, even after they almost seem to be like at like a truce, an impasse. And so it's really kind of a shocker, but Sun Chao is going after Yan Wuxi to save him from this ambush that he knows is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because Yan Wuxi is in the... Um, unique position of being like the strongest cultivator by himself individually um, and like the head of a really strong demonic sect that is backing the current emperor. Okay. The current emperor is kind of a weird dude but he's doing a pretty good job. His son the crown prince is kind of a stupid jerky kid. 
Um, but other cultivation sects and other cultivation strong people are more interested in backing the crown prince or like any number of other options um, to further their own gains, to get their own power. And Sun Chao ultimately just wants the good of the common people and for there to not be chaos in the realm. Mm -hmm. So he's like, it's in my best interest, it's in the best interest of everyone in this country if Yan Wuxi doesn't die and like set off like absolute chaos with like a fight for the throne. Okay. So that is like what he's chosen to do. We do kind of need him around. We kind of need him around to just like hold the power balance in check. Okay. Unfortunately, he arrives too late. <laughs> <laughs> By the time he shows up, I mean, he's blind. Maybe he got lost a little bit on the way. Mm -hmm. um, the five guys had already kicked his ass and Yan Wuxi, okay, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, the five guys wouldn't have kicked Yan Wuxi's ass, even though they're the strongest cultivators ever currently alive, except one of them was also a demonic cultivator and knew about a secret weakness in um, Yan Wuxi's core after he, like, she deviated in, like, another fight in, like, the previous oh, volume. So okay. he was kind of, his weakness was exploited, and they used that to kill him. Got it. And so by the time he arrives, they're like, well, we're going to make sure he's extra dead because he's so fucking scary. So we're gonna like behead him or something. And Sancho oh. was like, well, I don't think that's necessary. I think like you should respect the dead. And they're like, get fucked. You're just <laughs> you're just a guy. And he's like, oh yeah. And he like fights, like, I think like a few of the guys had left, but he fights like at least two of these strongest cultivators. And with such a powerful attack that they're like, this isn't worth it. He's already dead. And they like take off and leave. Ooh, okay. Um, that was basically all he had in him. He was bluffing, but at the very least, Yan Wuxi can get a proper burial. Yeah. But as he goes to like pick up his body, Yan Wuxi's dead corpse wrist grabs him back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Is yeah. he alive? Or was it like a muscle reaction thing? Yes. <laughs> so, I don't even know. I think frogs do this or something. <laughs> So like he's he's dead, but also next slide. <laughs> Turns out your friend here is only mostly dead. See, mostly dead is still slightly alive. <laughs> yeah, so thankfully I made you watch Princess Bride because that makes this a whole lot easier to understand. So he's like dead. However, he he knew he was gonna get his ass kicked in the kind of before the last So he blow. put himself in a coma. Kind of, yeah. So he's like dead, but also like he I don't know, he used like a sort of demonic cultivation thing to like just sort of be fake dead. So even though he's mostly dead, like he's not all the way dead. Okay. Can he be revived? That's that's probably going to be a long and difficult process as we're going to find out. Okay. But Sun Chao like takes him to this farmer's house and it's just like, I'm going to try to nurse you back to health the best I can and see what happens. He wants to latch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not that kind of nurse. <laughs> oh, okay, next, next slide. <gasps> Smooching time, this time with more soup. We just had soup. Yeah, and some smooches. Not at the same time, though, which is what these two are doing. <laughs> so Ew. in terms of nursing him back to health, he's like, this is Birdie. Birdie's not okay. Someone needs to feed Birdie mouth to mouth. Why can't you just use a spoon? Because... Like, it just dribbles out of his mouth. He's like, he's, okay, look, he's basically a corpse, right? Which doesn't make this any better, but like, if so he, he has to like force his no, jaw open no. and hold his tongue, it's very, very descriptive. Hold Yan Wuxi's tongue down with his own tongue because this is a corpse we're kissing, essentially. This is a fetish. This is a fetish. It just, it is what it is. And then he has to feed him the soup. And I don't even know if the soup is helping at this put, point like, because he has, he could have easily used a Funnel. No, okay, they didn't address this. There are feeding instruments yeah. that exist in this world, but he's in the like, the, he's like he's I'll in be, the back. I'll be the feeding Stop. instrument. <laughs> Stop. They're in the middle of nowhere. It's in the desert in this like little town. Okay, okay? the he's best doing his feeding best. instrument is my tongue in your mouth. And I'm just thinking like, wow, this is like so <laughs> Ew. much worse that he's like not even a warm body. He's a cold body. Oh. it's yeah, and of course like. Um, the, the farmer's daughter, like, he told the farmer and the farmer's, like, granddaughter 
that um oh we're just friends <gasps> <laughs> we're not only are we just friends my friend here is very sick and not dead um even though she's like i don't know about that and so chris yeah. she walks in and is like i hope he's not dead <laughs> as he's freaking kissing a corpse oh my a god mostly, a slightly alive corpse um it's it's anyways it's fine it's not like he's like stinks or anything so oh that's um, good yeah i mean he's like again he's slightly alive so we're all right okay so we hypothesize by just looking at like the pictures of this book that like Yan Wushi is gonna enter a baby girl era. Yeah. Boy, is he ever in a baby girl era. So um, this is what happens. Yan Wushi wakes up. Um, and it's like, why does my mouth taste like your tongue? <laughs> Yan Wushi wakes up and he's not Yan Wushi. Oh. This is some retrograde amnesia shit. Oh, okay. Okay, like he wakes up and he is a completely different person. In fact, he's several completely different people oh. that take turns. What? <laughs> yeah. Wait, Yanushi's alters? Yeah! <laughs> so this is a lot to deal with. Um, and it's a little bit kind of confusing for Sun Chao at first and for anyone reading this because you're like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, what's it's like, happening? who's fronting right now? Exactly, exactly. He's able to figure it out pretty quickly, but like, um, again, it's sometimes it's like, okay, is like is his chi rolled up is he did he just like wake up from sleeping like it's kind of it's kind of as he's like recovering like what causes someone to switch or take control varies but okay. so i'll go through like all of his baby girl sonas okay we have xiaoling who is like the most innocent um kind of like um childlike there's a little bit he's he's the most baby girl of all he doesn't speak very much like not in full sentences very much um i can't imagine yanushi acting like this I know. What's interesting though is that Xiaoling is um, his like original name. Oh. Yeah, like before he was Yan Wuxi, he was. So is this like his umming version of himself? It feels like it. It feels like it. It's hard to tell. Like, was he actually like this as like 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 a younger teen or a child, or like is this like a more unique identity, kind of fractured off from his soul? Yeah. This is all because of his weird like core shit going on. Yeah. Um. He does, he's um, very kind of paranoid and guarded, but he does trust Sun Chao like more than, like, and just, and he trusts Sun Chao and nobody else. And he's the least like Yan Wuxi out of like all of his little baby girl sonas. And he is the one that Sun Chao likes the most. Like, like Xia Ling is the one that Sun Chao like inadvertently gets a little bit attached to on oh. all of this. It's really cute. Um, so for example, um, Xia Ling um, punches a baby lamb. <laughs> He's like, oh, like, I don't trust this baby lamb. <laughs> Kapow! I should have like, I should have made put a graphic for that or something. Um, it's yes. like, like maybe he'll like this baby lamb. Nope. Um, but then he's like, can you feed me soup from your mouth? <gasps> Stop. And you're like, that's weird. Why would he do that? And it's also, but it's because he thinks the soup is poison, and he wa he wants oh. to make sure that. Like, he's not gonna get poisoned. Oh my gosh. So He has every, like, no homo reason for all this homo stuff. Exactly. So, we got that going on. Then we have Ayan, who is um, extremely flirty, but genuine. Like, not teasing, mm -hmm. but, like, genuinely, like, openly affectionate. Like, Sun Chao, I think you're great. I like you. Um, he's easy to converse with. Like, he's speaking in full sentences. He has some of Yan Wuxi's memories. Um, so he, he's a little bit informed um, and can fill in Sun Chao on things. He can even fool other people by like putting on an act to sound oh, more like Yan Puts on his Yan Wuxi hat yes. on top of his Yan Wuxi body. <laughs> yes. Um, but he, but Ah Yan like distinguishes himself uh, from, uh, as a completely separate identity from Yan Wuxi. He's like referring like Yan Wuxi is like that guy. Like I'm not that guy. Mm. Um, like I think you're great. Like you would think that this would be Sun Chao's favorite, but he doesn't trust Ayan or his, or doesn't really desire his uh, coming upon him. Okay, okay. kind of prefers uh, Xia Ling's more like innocence. So, so is that guy like also you think a part of Yan Wuxi? Like <sighs> deep down, it's something that comes out even with his fake flirtiness. You know, it's interesting because like they all share like I would say like they're best described as like kind of like condensed, fractured variations of Yan Wuxi's personality. Mm. 
Like, for example, it's kind of noted, like, oh, they have, like, the same taste in food. They all do across the board. Right. Um, even though they, like, maybe, like, react to, like, those preferences in different ways. Um, so they're not, like, completely, like, actual separate identities in the case. Like, I wasn't sure at first, like, is he, like, like is Yan Wuxi actually, like, some sort of, like, weird, demonic, possessed guy who's actually, like, like way nicer on the inside? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's it. But these are kind of just... I think they're described as like fragmentations of his personality. So at this in point. a shippy way, this is quite hopeful to see that yes. like wow, he's c capable of this or like somewhere this kind of exists within him. Yeah, and that it's interesting too because this is part like it's great in a shippy sense, but it's also addressed in the novel of like the question of like what makes Yan Wuxi like who he is? Can he change? Does he have the capacity for change? Yeah. And like what does Sun Chao think? Of that and ultimately Sun Chao is um, obviously a little bit taken back by these different sides of him but ultimately is unaffected by them in the sense where he he says Yan Wuxi is Yan Wuxi like that is who he is like um, like he even at his core he is incapable of being anything but who he is okay and this isn't like it sounds a little bit damning but I think that's like Sun Chao like resolutely like accepting him yeah like for who he is, which is the worst guy ever. Yeah. Um, and he is actively, like, trying to help Yang Wushu recover from, like, he has, like, a gaping, like, head wound, by the way. Oh. <laughs> he was, like, literally knocked in the head. I forgot to mention that, but he has, like, a crack in the skull that, like, he's trying to recover from here, which is, hence the baby girl sonas. Okay. But he's actively trying to heal Yang Wushu to get the the OG Yang Wushu back because, like, that's what the world needs. The world yes, doesn't need the yes. nice version of him. They need the powerful version right. of him. He's who's like, wow, I love this version of you that is so nice to me. However, you uh, need to be bitchy again. Yes. Um, so even though, like, these other versions are more affectionate, he's not swayed by who he thinks Yang Wushu is. Okay. He's pretty much, like, after, like, the last betrayal, which really did affect him, he, like, is pretty much decided okay and then there's like yan wushu 2.0 which is like as he's kind of like um like when he's not ayan or or xia ling he, he is himself but there is still like a bit of a shift in his behavior because at first he's like really wounded and not putting out much of a aggression or fight mm -hmm. um so i describe him as somewhat declawed right um his head is a mess, but what's interesting is, like, he feels very disassociated from a lot of his memories, like, even, like, the memories of, like, betraying, like, Sun Chao. So it kind of leaves some, like, questioning of, like, does he feel as much malice towards him? Mm -hmm. Or, like, as he maybe did in the past? Or, like, is he, like, willing to let some of that go? Does that not represent him as much moving forward? It's interesting. Um, he even feels like some of the warmth that his other personalities have towards Sun Chao, and he has to like consciously like force that down. He's like, I feel what like these other facets feel towards Sun Chao, and it's only good things. But like, I'm choosing to not feel those things. Okay. So there's a glimpse of that, and most of all, I think most tellingly, he's jealous of Shelling for having Sun Chao's affection. Oh my god. For being his favorite, because um, Shelling is the least like him and he's the one that Sun Chao likes. So oh, okay. it's he has a bit of resentment for that. Um also um Xiaoling calls um Sun Chao Mei Ren Gaga, which means beautiful big brother. Oh my god. Like, oh my god, how could you not like him? Oh so, it's really cute. That's Yan Wuxi in a nutshell at this point. A broken nutshell, but we'll take it. The baby girl sonas. Yep. <laughs> and then we enter You'll never guess what. The Banyue arc? Yes! We go through the Banyue arc again. It's inescapable, even in other Tanmei books. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, okay, I'm going to take you through this. Okay. And I'll try to try to keep it succinct. To set the scene here, um, Sun Chao goes to town, try to find some medicine for Yanushi. He ends up running into Yu Ai, who is the guy who first betrayed him. Basically, the Zheng Cheng to his Wei Wuxian, his brother from his cultivation sect. Um, who, like, poisoned him, had him lose the fight, fall down the cliff, like, took his place as leader, all of that. Okay. Now, in the past, um, Sun Chao, like, kind of let bygones be got. He let bygones be bygones because he thought, you know, I don't want to cause disunity in the sect. It's not worth it. They need to stay strong, even though I think they're on, going on the wrong path. Mm -hmm. So he kind of just kept quiet about it. But 
in front of like a bunch of other cultivators like in this town that are gathered together for like this like coil dragon summit um he calls out ui for being like you poisoned me <laughs> you motherfucker <laughs> you caused me to like get in this state and you took my place unrightfully and actually our Shizen would fucking hate you <laughs> you you don't deserve to be like sect leader you're wrong and moreover you're a freaking traitor you're conspiring with this like other nation uh, for power and that's wrong and like you suck like in front of everybody and like you eyes like come back to gusu ah. <laughs> i don't know i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> like he's trying to like play off like you're like like shh calm down just come home I'm like, I know I betrayed you in the past, but I promise I'll take good care of you now. I had to do what I had to do. Right. He's like, absolutely having none of it. He's like, fuck you. And it's this really powerful moment where you feel like, like Sun Chao has been through so much and like so much of his resilience comes from like letting things go, but he's also learning to like stand up for himself mm -hmm. uh, and just like make more of a stand in general and willing to like do things that kind of are shaking up the world a little bit. So it's just a really powerful um, scene, like emotionally, and it just shows a lot of growth in his character, which I really enjoyed seeing. Nice. Um, but this is what kickstarts the Banyue arc, because also in town is Chung Gong, who, I don't know if you remember, is the dirty little urchin boy with the donkey sandwiches, yes. who becomes like the jerky guy who tries to betray Sun Chao, who later becomes a nobleman, and now he's showing up again as like this like really powerful guy. He's just moved up so much in society. He's like wealthy, he's smart, he's like got a bunch of like, he's got a whole entourage. Um, and it's like, how did he move up in the world so fast? It's revealed that he has a photographic memory and he's basically speed running cultivation and everything else in life. Oh, okay. It's a yeah. gifted child. He's a gifted child. All those donkey sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> it was the donkey sandwiches actually. They're great for your brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's really interesting that he came back as a character. I thought we'd be done with him, but it seems like he's becoming even more predominant and important. So hmm. it'll be interesting to see what he represents. Okay. Um, but he uh, chases down uh, Sun Chao and is like, Hey, I know your dirty little secret. You are hiding Yan Wuxi, who is supposed to be dead, and he's alive. And um, I kidnapped the... the farmer grandpa that was you staying with you so that you'll help me so please help me pretty please oh my god and he's like fine i guess yeah <laughs> since you kidnapped someone okay um and he needs help finding a magical type of jade that exists in this underground city in the middle of the desert a la banyue arc okay so he and yan wushi hop on a horse and join his entourage to go find the city and they run into a sandstorm and they all fall into this underground city um, and you may be wondering where Bigfoot comes in. I regret to say there are scary, evil, creepy ape people living in the underground oh, city. A lot of the Time Machine novel. Wait, um, Sarah or CJ were telling me that there is, they, they fall in a hole, and they, there are these monkey people, and they are never brought up once again. <laughs> no, you're right, I think I do remember them telling yeah. me that. Yeah! Oh god, that means they're never gonna be brought up again. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, they do give an explanation, not a good one. Okay. Okay, but I just need you to understand, these are giant apes. They are extremely fast and extremely intelligent, and their fur is like steel. It is oh. hard to penetrate at all. That's because they're eating like the magic jade flowers that are growing in the underground. Are they able to communicate with humans? No. Oh, so they're like beasts. They're beasts. That's scary! Their leader has a human face. Oh no. It's oh, this so is like I'm picturing like the Beast Titan from Attack on Titan. Yeah, kind of like that. Like they they're scary. And Ew. like if you've like watched like the old Time Machine movie. Oh yeah, that movie scared the shit out of me. Out. They're like like the Morlocks or whatever. Yep. So creepy. Okay. Yeah. So that's horrifying and they're like hunting them in the dark and their claws have like a poison in them and it's just awful and they're like really hard to fight off especially in a group. Um and like the throwaway explanation of how they exist is like, oh yeah, in this ancient city, they just, they trained apes to like guard this part of the city. And then I don't know what happened to the underground city, but apparently the apes were all that's left. And they kept eating this like super flower that made them super strong, super smart. So they're, they're not like 
freaky humans. They're they're actually apes that became freakier over but time. But the leader has a human face. Yeah, which I, is inexplicable. <laughs> I guess it's magical, like flower thing. Like they're evolving down there. Yeah, and it's like okay. I feel like we should be more concerned about that. Yeah, I think the cultivation world should should be a little bit more concerned about oh that. Oh my gosh. Um, and you may be wondering how are they surviving down there? without any food? Well, they eat fucking spiders, okay? There's giant spiders down there, oh, like the size of your hand, ew. and they are poisonous, and they are like the typical, like think of like the mummy movie, like they like crawl under your skin and suck your blood out, and every time you like cut into one of them, a thousand baby spiders come out and oh. like crawl all over you and suck your blood out, and it's horrible. We are both like kind of freaked out by monkeys and spiders. So, so this is like the worst case scenario. <laughs> A thousand and four autumns, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> it is the worst thing ever. Oh. They go down there, they don't even, nobody even wants to be there, and it's horrible. <sighs> yeah, so they're down there looking for the magical jade. Okay. And while they're down there, um, Oh, yeah, one of the things Chung Gong says, it's like, okay, throw, I'll make, I'll sweeten the deal for you. There's also, there's also magical aloe vera there, and maybe that'll help Yan Wushi, I don't know. Oh my god. So, Sun Chao's, like, freaking fighting the AIDS, getting himself beat up. Yan Wushi goes, and he finds the magical aloe vera, and he, like, takes some for himself, and then he destroys the rest of it. And you're like, that's weird. Shen Chao does? No, Yan Wushi does, yeah. Yan Wushi finds Oh, aloe oh, sorry. Vera. So he takes it and like four plants and he destroys the rest of it. And you're and like, then, that was rude. That was a little rude. Why did, why did he do that? And just no explanation. Anyways, Chung Gong and the rest of the people catch up. Um, and Chung Gong, like, th like most everyone dies in this arc. Oh, okay. like, he's like, all like the nameless entourage dies. Chung Gong though, you think he's there because like the Carmelian, this like magical jade is like super special and stuff. But like in the chaos, he goes down to like this big, field of like the shining glowing red carmelian and he like takes out this sword and it's this, the legendary sword that was mentioned conveniently at the beginning of, of this volume that is like this emperor's sword that was like disappeared for centuries and came back there's nothing like super magical about the sword but it's like whoever holds the sword is gonna be like king arthur and shit okay so you're like and so he spent a lot of money to buy the sword and everyone knows this but they assume he's gonna give it to a gift to his master um but he breaks the sword on the Carmelian. And you're like, oh, why? Because inside the sword is hidden one of the super secret cultivation schools. Oh my God, that's like right out of Indiana Jones. Right, <laughs> right? And so he's doing that in the middle of all this. Um, and then he gets poisoned by the Carmelian. Turns out the jade is super poisonous. Wow. And he needs an antidote. And Yan Wushi took this all for himself. Yep. I say let the donkey boy die. Right. But Yanushi is like, oh, oh, would you like to not die? That's, that's so sad. You could give me something. <laughs> and oh. so the whole time, like, he had the foresight to kind of know what was going on, like, why Chung Gong was going there. And so Chung Gong gives him, like, the scroll. Like, he had read it first because he has photographic memory. So he's, he's good. He's ready to give it up. Um, oh, I but see. he takes the antidote. And then you're like, wow, okay. Yeah, Wushi kind of saw into the future there. <laughs> he kind of, he kind of was like mega prepared, and that's like how he's like so good at being evil. It's like he's always two steps ahead, and you're almost kind of rooting for him at this point because we hate Chung Gong. Yeah, like he's a jerk, and we kind of love him being two steps ahead of the situation. Yeah, and like right before then, he happened to like save Sun Chao from falling off a cliff, which we appreciate. Okay, like we're like okay, but Sun Chao's like literally helping him out, and like the only person who doesn't want him dead. So it's like, was well, that self-serving or? Was that actually nice of him? Well, yeah. we find out because he freaking betrays Sun Chao again by leaving him behind in the cave. He like disappears into a secret passage and like the rest and like trips a mechanism that traps everyone in the cave. I don't know how many more betrayals I can take. I don't think I can take any more of this, but it keeps coming. Also the little censored panels for the spider. I didn't want to put in the spider picture for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> He betrays Sun Chao, and Sun Chao is like so used to it at this point. He's like, wow, I don't even feel sad this time. I just kind of expected this. That's even more sad. I feel a little bit sad, but not that bad. But then, Yan Wuxi comes back. <laughs> and it's like, that audio that's like, hey, hey. <laughs> but is it Yan Wuxi? <gasps> 
It's a monkey, Yanushi. No, <laughs> it's one of his nicer altars. Oh my okay? god. So what happened is Xie Ling took over. Like while Yan Wuxi was conscious, he looked and he was like, "No, you motherfucker! We're not gonna betray him." That's the love of our life. <laughs> um, which is interesting because, like, like the personalities have been taking turns, like, like, like at day or during the night or something. But like, one forcing over the other, like mid consciousness, is like not happened. Okay. So like, this is like an emergency. But by the time, um, like Xia Ling comes back, he's already like transformed into Ayan, okay. who is like a little bit more like, you know able to like explain what's going on and stuff but it was Shilling who like chose to come back for him or had the strength to do that so oh. again Sun Chao has a really big soft spot going Sun Chao is dating Shilling pretty much <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit they're having some quality time yeah and like is like basically the only person who's come back for him okay okay so after this um gesture of kindness asking for nothing in return um like Sun Chao can't help but start to think of Xia Ling as his own person rather than just a facet of Yang Wuxi's personality which he was willing to like set aside <laughs> Yang Wuxi is such a douche and you're just nothing like him yeah okay so we make it out of this arc alive just to kind of um check in on where Sun Chao and Yan Wuxi are as characters. There's a couple of quotes that really describe like their personalities and like why they're acting the way they're acting, which is really helpful to me because Yan Wuxi is an enigma, deep fried and a conspiracy for me. I don't <laughs> understand him at all. But the book does a good job of explaining a little bit okay. why he's such an asshole. But first, a little quote about Sun Chao. So Yan Wuxi um, starts out by asking him like, hey, did it fucking hurt when you were betrayed like multiple times like by like, you are by me like how come you're not evil yet like asking for a friend yeah and he's just like i mean it definitely hurt a little bit <laughs> but i and like i felt a little bit of resentment but it didn't let that define me and he's like yeah but there's like you've only encountered bad people like there's no good people like how could you keep doing this he's like there were good people you just haven't met any because you're you're bad and you kill everyone so so Sun Chao tells him, Sun Chao's heart is very small, Sun Chao says. There's only room enough for good people like them. A few people that he met along the way that he tells Yan Wuxi about. As for those who don't deserve to be remembered, I won't spare them anything, not even hatred. And Yan Wuxi asks, then what about Yan Wuxi? Do you not hate him either? So Ooh. Sun Ch Chao is very much someone who's decided not to hold on to hatred of his heart. It doesn't mean he doesn't experience like a little bit of anger and resentment, but he's ultimately decided, I do not have the energy to feel anything but affection for the people I, I do meet who are good yeah. and who have been kind to me. I'm not going to like reserve any energy, what limited energy I have, for hating people who have been unkind to me. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's so beautiful. And I genuinely think that if someone has personally experienced a betrayal or finds himself like really holding a lot of anger in the heart towards like injustices in the world or injustices that have happened to him personally mm -hmm. like this kind of character is like really healing to read about like this is someone who's like gone on this path for really like not only holding on to peace but like really carving it out with greater and greater adversity like and not just like ignoring things but really like accepting it and it's just yeah. so it's so fascinating. Like you really do feel deeply like attached to Sun Chao as a character and want to see him succeed and like really admire him as a person. Like he's great. Yeah. But an explanation for like why <laughs> Yan Wuxi is the opposite. Let's see. I think he's talking to Ayan at the moment. So Ayan is explaining Yan Wuxi and he says, I understand why my previous self treated you the way he did. He's a paranoid person at heart, someone who'd never trust anyone else. No matter how good you are, he'd always want to bring out the darkness hidden within you. But he doesn't know that you are you. There may be hundreds of thousands of Chen Gongs in this world, but there is only one Sun Chao. Mm. So, it seems like Yan Wuxi's motivation for just constantly hurting him and betraying him does seem to be out of this idea that everyone in the world is inherently bad and anyone who's trying to be otherwise is lying right so he's trying he finds one person who like is holding out and being a good person no matter what and he's still trying to like beat the truth out of him and yeah. it's not working yeah and he's he 
hasn't come to the realization that like Sun Chao really is genuinely this way. Yeah. I see. I yeah. see. He's like, you make me feel different than other people. Suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's paranoid. He's like, what the fuck are you hiding? Um, what is interesting is like after, um, like Yan Wu is coming back from like his injuries and stuff. There is a noticeable shift in his behavior where he does recognize that Sun Chao is who he is. Mm -hmm. Genuinely good to the core. Nothing he does to him will change that. He's finished sniffing him out. He's, he, yes, exactly. Um, doesn't mean that he's really le that much less of an asshole to him, but he know, he's not going to go out of his way to like try to push him yeah. just because of that. Okay. Um, he has less reason to antagonize him, which is great. Um, and... He, at this point, he starts to want something else from Sun Chao. His cock. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, he, he thinks that he has the potential to be his equal. Oh, how deep. Yeah. His equal as an opponent. Someone, like, in martial arts only, you know? Yeah. But that's really important to Yan Wuxi. Like, yeah. He's on top of the world, and he genuinely... Like, he's always picking a fight and always happy to be antagonistic because he is searching for an opponent to be his, his match. Because he's so fucking lonely. <laughs> this is like Viktor Nikivarov having his spark once Yuri beats his record. And it's like, I'm coming back to the world of skating because now there's a worthy opponent. So right now, Sun Chao is like at 50% power. But Yan Wu, she's like, there, you know, I have an incentive to see you at your best. Yeah. Like, if you can come back in full force, you could very well be my equal. If you wouldn't be, if you, and if you weren't such a freaking softy. Yeah. You know. Um, so that's interesting is that he sees him as having this potential. Even if they're not aligned on the same side, he still would appreciate having him be his equal. Okay. And Sun Chao has been changed by Yan Wuxi and living in the outside world for so long. And um, what's happening is he's really starting to discern people's true intentions. Like, at, like in the first couple volumes, he was really allowing himself to be deceived or led along or kind of just go with the flow that things happen to him. But now he's like proactively like avoiding trouble or like, you know, confronting people or really like seeing through to who they really are. Because Yan Wuxi taught him to be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> like to really... Like, Yan Wuxi taught him to, that people are not what they seem. Yeah. So, that's interesting. Is like, he's grown so much from a negative experience or from a negative person in a positive way. Yeah. It's working out for him. Okay. Yeah. Remember this woman? Yeah, she's mad because she can't uh, take her hat off. Would you like to take a guess who this woman is in actuality? Oh, she's not like the badass woman. No. You want to take a closer look at this picture and see if she looks familiar at all? Is she Yan Wuxi? She's Yan Wuxi in a dress. <laughs> no! So... <laughs> Wait, really? Yes! Look how mad he is! Oh my god! Oh my god! Even the fingernails are painted. <laughs> that is an excellent detail. So, Sun Chao is like, I... like. I'm tired of getting attacked on the road. Like, we're gonna need to be in disguise. So you're gonna have to be the girl. <laughs> now, he's talking to, thankfully, one of his baby girl Sonas, and Xiao Ling is not, is not happy, but also, like, not at all resisting. And so, obediently wears the outfit. Like, there's a whole makeover scene. Like, Stop. Sun, Sun Chao plucks his eyebrows. Oh my god. Like, paint, like, puts makeup on him because he's, like, used to, like, touching up, like, portraits and stuff, like, as an artist. Yeah. And so he can apply makeup, obviously. Mm -hmm. Normal transfer of skills. <laughs> um, and Xi Ling, like, gets back at him by, like, refusing to be called anything but his wife in public. <laughs> Um, it makes Stop. him buy him sugar candy, and he's like, it gets a sugar candy that looks exactly like Sun Chao, and then bites its head off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or, or then licks it very sensually. Stop. And Sun Chao feels really weird about it. Oh my god, stop. And Sun Chao's like, 
I want to tell him to stop, but then, like, I'm being weird, so I'm just going to let that go. Does Yanmushi, like, have sex with women at all in the story? Okay, here's an interesting thing. Yanmushi is, does not care about gender. Beautiful is beautiful. Okay. Um, So it does seem, I don't know how much, I don't know what his sexual history looks like, but it sounds like, um, like, I'm... Like, it's not like he's a playboy or anything, like, but, like, it sounds like he has plenty of experience and that he, like, enjoys, he enjoys a beauty, like, when he sees one and, like... So he's had sex with men. He's, I don't know, it seems like he's probably topped men before. Um, and huh. what's really interesting, and I forget this because Yanushi is usually busy being a jerk, but, like, he does, like, blatantly find Sun Chao attractive, even, like, when he's Yanushi, evil, demon, orb lord, he has no problem being, like, I think you're pretty. Huh. You're like, yeah, you're cute, you're pretty, you're beautiful. Like, he teases him all the time, but he genuinely is attracted to him. Okay, okay, interesting. That doesn't mean, like, he absolutely has a boyfriend bone in his body. Yeah. But, like, I mean... His boyfriend bone is going in Chen Chao's body. Yes. So, so there's that. We got that going for him. Whereas Sun Chao is, like, your typical, like, nice Taoist cultivator who thinks no horny thoughts whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Except for when he sees him uh, suckling upon his yeah. candied body. Yeah, so anyways, they get back to basically one of Yan Wuxi's safe houses um, where he has staff waiting for him, and they're like, like, where's Yan Wuxi? Oh my oh. god. <laughs> That's funny. And so they're like at his house together. Um, oh, so when um, Yan Wuxi, like, kind of pops back into his body and sees that he's dressed as a woman, he doesn't throw a fit over it. He's like... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of smart, kind of funny that you feel like you won't regret this later, but like the very least you could do is like freaking paint my nails. Anyone who looks at my hands would be like, what, this is obviously a man in a dress, like oh my all God. women paint their nails. Oh my God, stop. And so he's like, fine, I'll buy nail polish for you. And he does. And so <gasps> presumably at some point, Yanushi or Sun Chao were, were painting nails. <laughs> That's so yes. funny. Oh my yeah. god. What an enigma. It's so hard to get a read on Yan Wuxi. Yeah, I really struggle with it. Um, so, just as a reminder, Sun Chao wants Yan Wuxi to like, use like the silk scroll they found in the Banyue Ark, or stole in the Banyue Ark, to repair his demonic core, um, and to show himself alive so that we can kind of save the stability of the country. Unfortunately, this would mean the disappearance of all the other personalities that are so nice to him. Mm. So, a little bit like, ah, oh, that's a bummer, but ultimately, it must be done, right? That's sad. So, at this point, Yan Wuxi... Does he, like, kiss Shelling goodbye? We'll get to some kissing, and we'll get to Shelling, but, like, Ooh. don't get your hopes up. Oh. <laughs> Yan Wuxi is basically back during the day now. It's only at night when his other personalities come out. Um, <laughs> so, he's basically back to normal. Okay. Which is unfortunate. Um, let's see. On page 251. I'm just waiting for a scene where, like, Shelling is like, you know he likes you. Or oh, something. my God. If only. Oh. Whenever his flaw was exposed and his personality shifted, Yan Wuxi could feel it. It was like he'd grown another pair of eyes and was watching on the outside, but he could only watch, unable to control his body. So he could see how Sun Chao interacted with his other personalities. Sun Chao maintained some wariness toward even the sincerely gentle Ayan. There was only one exception. Back in Ryosheng, Xia Ling, who shouldn't have awakened at that time, had used all his strength to seize control of his body and return to find Sun Chao. At that time, though Yan Wuxi had been in a deep slumber, he'd coolly watched as Sun Chao had smiled at Xia Ling, and he'd also felt the tremors within Sun Chao's heart. That man was tender-hearted by nature. If someone gave him one thing, he'd return to them ten. If any other person went through what he had with Cheng Gong and Yuai, even if they weren't left seizing with hatred, it would at least make them disheartened and dispassionate. But Sun Chao instead cherished kindness even more, even if that kindness looked trivial in the eyes of others. It's like he'd been through so much shit that if anyone's even a little bit kind to him, it's magnified tenfold. Mm-hmm. That was why Sun Chao had started to show Xia Ling favor. Perhaps Sun Chao really had begun to treat Xia Ling as his own person. Only when in front of Xia Ling did Sun Chao separate him from Yang Wuxi. However kind he was to the former, he'd be just as cold to the latter. But the more he did so, the more intrigued Yan Wuxi became. In the past, he'd teased Sun Chao for two reasons. 
The first was that he thought this person somewhat ridiculous for never learning his lesson after repeated betrayals, that everyone held evil within their hearts, and the only difference was how deeply they hid it. Sun Chao himself couldn't be an exception. He tried everything to draw out that malice within the depths of his heart. The second was that he wanted to implant the demonic core within Sun Chao to see what would happen if one fused a demonic and Taoist core, so Sun Chao had been his guinea pig. But life was unpredictable. Sun Chao didn't walk in the direction Yan Wuxi had set for him. Instead, he'd taken a completely different path. Though he'd experienced trial after trial, forced again and again to confront the treacheries of the human heart, this person had refused to change. He was even willing to treat Xia Ling, who'd been born from Yan Wuxi himself, with such gentle amiability and sincerity. Should he call this kind of person foolish or stubborn? But in Yan Wuxi's eyes, whether it was Xia Ling or Yan Wuxi, it didn't matter. Good or evil, painful or wonderful, he alone should be special to Sun Chao. There was no need for some other random person to partake in that special regard. Ooh, okay. So this is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of a shift there in what he wants from Sun Chao. At first, it was only like a guinea pig and just to kind of expose his true nature. But now it's like, even if we are like arch enemies, arch nemesises, I want to be the only special one. You are my special. Thank you. Hmm. I see, I see, yeah, I see. It's a little fuss, isn't it? Yes, it is. The bald guy comes to kick Yang Wuxi's ass. <laughs> okay. The bald guy is like the top cultivator guy in the world right now. Uh, because Yang Wuxi is, you know, kind of no longer that person with his injury. Yeah. Um, and so... Sun Chao and Yan Wuxi escape together, and they go into the mountains, and they have a little cottage core living in a cave moment together. You know, you see a little bit, a little bit of gestures from Yan Wuxi that are a little sus. It's like he gives him some, like, forces him some medicine. Okay. Um, shoves some medicine to his mouth. Not with his own mouth, but, mm. um, so he's kind of helping him. Um, he cooks him, like, a dish with a silly name. Um, in the woods, and he reassures him that the staff left behind in the house, house will be okay because, like, Sun Chao's ready to, like, march right back there and, like, save the people. But he's right. like, they're gonna be fine. And he's honest. Yeah. Um, he doesn't think the Buddhist guy will, like, fuck him up or anything. Yeah. And he would have said nothing before, but it's, like, because he doesn't want Sun Chao to go down there that he says that. Right. And he even, like, when... Um, Sun Chao, like, asks him, like, hey, are you okay? He, like, extends his wrist for him to check his, like, acupoint, which is the same as basically, like, letting him go like this. Like, mm. that's, like, he, like, kind of, like, letting someone go for your throat. Yeah. Um, but he kind of is showing a little bit more trust, a little bit less animosity. So you're like, what's happening? Is it just because Sun Chao is, like, you know, literally shown that he is his ally for purely altruistic meat? Like, is he just kind of fulfilling his own you know, goals by being nice to him. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but also in the cave, if you want to go to the next slide. Smooching time two, soupless edition. Hmm, <laughs> what happened? So, um, Sun Chao is having a little nightmare in the cave, and Yan Wuxi wakes up, he hears him kind of like fussing in his sleep, and he even sees that Sun Chao is crying in his sleep. Oh. And he like kind of reaches over and like touches the tears on his face. And then Sun Chao says, Xiaoling. He says Xiaoling in his sleep. Stop. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is this the part where you screamed in bed? Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. But um, uh, just like a paragraph away from this part because Yan Wuxi has a moment where he actually, like, it's it's scary. Like, he hears that, and, like, his face changes. Like, he, it's like... He's so he's, jealous. He's so jealous. He's so angry. And then, like, just a myriad of emotions cross his face. And it's like a demonic possession thing where it's like, all these emotions are fighting for dominance on his face. It's like a thousand personalities live in him, and it's creepy. And, like, he reaches out for him, and you think he's, like, gonna hurt him. And then all washes away and he like he looks completely calm and he leans down and he kisses Sun Chao. Oh my god! And you think because of that you think oh maybe Xiaoling like fought to the surface again 
and is kissing him. Yeah. That's what I thought. And I turned the page in the next chapter. No, it's Yan Wuxi being a jerk again. <laughs> um, so he basically, like, yeah, he kisses him and Sun Chao wakes up like, what the fuck are you doing? Slapping him across the cave and stuff. And Yan Wuxi has the audacity to put on this little act where he pretends to be Shaoling. Oh, yeah. And Sun Chao doesn't fall for it whatsoever because he doesn't call him Marin Gaga. Oh. Yeah. So he's like, doesn't fall for it. And then um, he kind of just throws in his face like, guess what? Good news. I'm all better. I just suppressed all my personality. So I'm back to normal. And that means Shaoling is effectively dead. Oh. He's never going to come back. Oh, my God. I'm cured. Oh, my God. Oh, my tummy hurts. Sun Chao's tummy hurts, too. <laughs> He gets that news after having a nightmare, and the nightmare was actually about, like, his his dead chiseling and stuff. It actually didn't involve, like, Shaoling at all, um, but he gets that news that Shaoling is basically dead, and um, that he'll never come back, and um, and he cries again. <gasps> because to him, Shaoling was the person who treated him with kindness and came back for him. Yeah! And oh, this is so twisted. It's and so, cause it's like it is Yan Wuxi, but it's not. And oh, it's so it's so close and it's, it's so far. And Yan Wuxi like makes fun of him for it. Like like why are you so soft around him? You know he's like just like a personality of mine and like the dumb one. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like to me he was an old friend. He's like how can you be an old friend? You only met him a couple times. And he wasn't even a person. And he's just like. He doesn't even bother trying to explain it to Yan Wuxi, but, like, he absolutely grieves for him. Oh, my God. This is so twisted. Like, okay, this is obviously, like... It's good angst, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's good. It made good. my tummy hurt, though. Yeah. But Yan Wuxi is absolutely angry over all this because he is mad that Xiaoling is, like, the least like him and the one that Sun Chao likes the most. Like, that is, like, explicitly... Why? Maybe if you stop betraying him. Yeah, he like, like you honestly, more. like which is it? Do you not want him to like you or what? Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we got that going. That's good though. That's it, really good. It is really good. Another betrayal! Or Yan Wuxi being nice for once? I genuinely have no idea at this point. I really don't. I'm probably more confused than Sun Chao at this point. I don't even know. I give up knowing. I'm just along for the ride. Oh god. Um, they leave the cave together. Um, they have to leave quite suddenly because they're being pursued by, again, a bunch of demonic cultivators, like the freaking um, Buddhist guy. And then they're also... I guess um, someone else chasing after them and about to show up is um, Sang Jingxing is the sadistic demonic cultivator guy mm -hmm. who, you know, was going to do terrible things to Sun Chao. Well, now he wants to also do, like, terrible, probably less sexual things to Yan Wuxi because he, you know, Sun Chao kicked his ass and then Yan Wuxi was kind of responsible for that because he was involved yeah. in setting up that situation. So he's after both of them. Okay. And he's almost arrived. And so this is like the same guy that Yan Wuxi handed Sun Chao over to before. Yeah. So they escape the cave and they go to um, a temple, to, like an abandoned temple to hide. And um, like Sun Chao, I think, like fainted. Like he was having like all sorts of like feverish issues. But he wakes up in this temple and Yan Wuxi like, like freezes all of his acupoints and makes him um, unable to move. Okay, Hua Chang. Right. And he gives him this big speech about how he's like, hey, just so you know, I'm still evil and I don't regret handing you over to him. <laughs> just so you know. Wow, thanks, so you know, dude. Yeah. Um, I have zero regrets. And like, and he also is like still kind of like teasing him and asking him like, hey, do you regret like, like taking me this far? Like, do, do you regret helping me at all? Because like, I don't regret anything. I don't regret being mean to you at all. Mm-hmm. And he mocks him for not being more cold-hearted to him, like, you, like, you idiot, you just keep getting betrayed over and over again, like, when will you learn? Fucking idiot. And he, and Sun Chao responds, I would rather thank you for inevitably leading me down this path that has allowed me to rebuild my martial arts and learn more about the world and become a better person than hold any grudges against you. Oh my god. And, and Yan Wuxi is like, I fucking hate that. Yeah! And he... Um, this time, like, like seals his voice by forcibly kissing him. 
So he's like kissed him like several times over like this, the course of these few scenes. And it's like, at this point, I'm running out of excuses yeah. for him. Like, at this point, Sun Chao isn't really even that bothered by it or surprised. Like, obviously, he doesn't like it anymore. But, like, it's not like he's getting a rise out of him. Like, he must just want to kiss him. Yeah. Because he likes his face. He's so jealous and, like, clearly has some sort of feeling for him. Yeah. And it's so convoluted because he's a fucked up, strange man. <laughs> so, like, you may be wondering, why did he, like, render him a like, incapable of moving, incapable of speaking. Clearly, he's about to do something bad to him. Well, he actually um, hides him behind the Buddha statue, which is, like, hollow on the inside because temples are cheap. <laughs> and he shoves the statue against the wall. Like, he traps him in there. Okay. Which sounds a little bit scary. But obviously, he can't, like... I mean, eventually, Sun Chao is going to, like, break from his restraints. Yeah. Um, so it's not like he's stuck there. It's to hide him from their pursuers. He's going to lure them away. Oh, okay. So that so Sun Chao isn't him. found. Because Sun Chao is injured severely from, like, helping Yan Yushi escape the safe house where they were discovered. Yeah. And can't fight back anymore. And Yan Yushi is pretty hurt and isn't much help either. Yeah. So he's actually saving Sun Chao from the same person that he originally betrayed him to. Oh. Which is interesting, which is why he kind of had to make a big spiel about how, like, by the way, I'm still evil. <laughs> right, right. But as he's, like, sealing him away in the statue, like... He's like... <laughs> <laughs> literally. Sun Chao looks very, like, he's, like, he's like fighting as hard as he can. Like, there's tears in his eyes. He's, like, very upset. He's like, I worked really hard for you to not die, and, like, I'm not going to not do anything. Like, he hates having this agency taken away from him yeah and so he looks very aggrieved good that new word and yanushi is like fuck he's kind of hot though oh my god <laughs> and he's like it's literally like like oh you better not let anyone else see that look of yours <gasps> or like like you know even i won't be able to help ravishing you or whatever like oh some my comment god. like that oh my god he's like like never mind that freaking like sadist guy like freaking if you look at me like that i'm not gonna be able to help myself stop. like stop oh, oh my god, god. I'm, i've learned too much um, so, like, with that flirty little ado, he, like, hides him away. Um, the pursuers arrive, um, they're searching the temper. Meanwhile, inside the Buddha statue, if you want to go to the next slide. There's probably a metaphor in here somewhere. <laughs> so he's stuck in the statue, and he, like, kind of goes through, like, the Enlightenment realm, and he's kind of, like, imagining all of, like, these visuals and stuff, and eventually he, like, he, like, breaks free of, like, you know, the acupoint restraints and, like, his Nerodin's flood with chi, and it's like he kind of just, like, freaking leveled up in, like, cultivation. Like, just had a major breakthrough. Mm. Um, and so he's, like, in the Buddha statue experiencing enlightenment, so, like, I don't know. Among Metaphor. heaven and earth, I alone am the strongest. <laughs> some, I am alone some sort the, of metaphor. I am the chosen one. <laughs> Something about a Buddha and a Buddha, I don't know. Got it. Um... So there's that. And so he breaks out, um, fights a bunch of guys, runs after Yan Wuxi, can't find him, was probably led in the wrong direction by, like, by Rong, the girl who's like, like, he went that way. And there's like, God damn it, oh my she God. probably went the other way because she doesn't want me to, like, fight anybody. So, yeah, so he leveled up, Yan Wuxi's gone, pursued by, like, the worst guy ever. Mm -hmm. um, it's really ambiguous whether or not, like, Yan Wuxi, like, did something nice or, like, I don't know. It's weird. What was that? Yeah. Um, but all Sun Chao knows is that he has to go, like, like to the capital because there's going to be trouble. That's where Yan Wuxi's headed. You know, they have to protect the emperor. Yada, yada. Next slide. Oh, by the way, the emperor is dead. Shen Chao put up with Yan Wuxi for nothing, I guess. <gasps> oh, damn. They're too late. The crown prince poisoned his own dad oh. and took over. And started immediately, like, throwing his weight around and, like, anyone who dissented against him, any nobles who, like, went against him, he immediately arrested them, their families, like, it's the whole, like, capitalism and chaos, it's, uh, not good for anybody. Damn. And suddenly, like, again, it's like a witch hunt, they're, like, going after all of these, like, potential threats, even, like, the families of these people, and so... Um, Sun Chao ends up uh, taking care of like these two um, kids who are like like noble families children who are like you know being chased after by like these soldiers who you know 
want to capture them. Like, this little girl witnessed the murder of the emperor, um, and now is, like, the only witness. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, they're going to try to silence her. And then another boy, like, his dad, you know, is supposedly a traitor. And so, like, Sun Chao is basically in the middle of all this chaos with a couple of kids to protect, and a whole army is against him. Okay. Next slide. And so there is, like, this epic battle between him and, like, like these top-tier, like, cultivators who are on the opposing side and are, like, out to kill those kids. Okay. <laughs> and he, like, defeats them all in, like, this most glorious battle. And this is in front of a large amount of people, like, all of the soldiers, all these people in the city. And it's a very important scene because suddenly he goes from having, like, a reputation of someone, a sect leader who fell into, like, these absolute pits of despair with, like, he's blind, he has no cultivation, he's wandering around, he's been sleeping with Yan Wuxi, probably. Yeah. Like, his reputation's in shambles. And now people are seeing him fight, and they're like, he has surpassed his own master. He is an incredibly noble person. We're seeing him, like, fight for this noble cause. Like, he is clearly going to be, like, legendary in our generation. Like, it's like this light is dawning on everyone. Like, this guy is awesome. Yeah. Cool. And so it's an amazing scene that really is, like, really uplifting where you realize that, like, things are going to start to turn around for his public image, which he's learned not to care about, but it's still really nice to see. I'm assuming he's not blind anymore? No, he's still blind. <laughs> what? He had his Buddha enlightenment and his eyes are still broken? Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, to be fair, like, it doesn't impede him that much, but it's more like he's very like, nearsighted during the day, like, yeah, and kind of night blind. Okay. But, yeah. Like a good, gr trusted grandma. Yeah, like a trusted grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's where this book leaves off. They wow. don't even meet Yan Wuxi again. How much more is there? I don't know. Interesting. Well, I fucking ship it, man. I I, I think Yan Wuxi's whole fucked up little scenario is hot. <laughs> I'm into it. Especially the whole Shaoling thing and him being so jealous of himself and like just still continuing to be mean. I'm like, there's so much to unpack there. You know, I feel like I'm finally starting to see the glimmer of, like, light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Like, um, Sun Chao is, like, finally, like, he's not at 100% yet. Um, like, there's definitely still more for him to go in terms of, like, becoming, like, all-powerful. Yeah. But, like, he has this major breakthrough, and it's clear that, like, if he, like, recovers enough to be Yan Wuxi's, like, equal, like, an equal match in martial arts. Yeah. Um, th that might be enough to like really like shift the tides to their relationship once and for all because Yan Wuxi does desperately need someone that like it's impossible for him to like f to screw over yeah yeah like he like as much as he like loves dominating over others like he needs someone like he absolutely like physically cannot stop yeah and he already like has faith in like Sun Chao being who he is as a person and so if they're at a level where like he can't fuck with him physically yeah anymore like, they, they might finally be on footing to really explore more of that um, interesting lenience. Yeah. Like, I might be willing to help you, or, like, I'm definitely attracted to you. Like, oh, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, my gosh. We'll if, like, if Sun Chao can, like, hold his own and not be fucked over by Yan Wuxi, maybe there's hope. <laughs> maybe, maybe your boyfriend shouldn't be your worst enemy, but that's okay. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. I gotta say, though, um... Another thing I continue to like about Thousand Autumns is, like, from the beginning, like, this series has had the most maybe visually interesting and, like, kind of philosophically compelling view of cultivation mm. that I've seen. Like, it's really in-depth. It's very, like, internal. It's, like, a lot about, like, the spiritual journey of, like, progressing through, like, these different mindsets. Um, and it's described very visually, even when it's happening, like, as, like, an internal spiritual experience. Like, it's described so beautifully. And all of the fights, like, there's, like, several major fights in this book. There's several major fights in every volume. They're all described so epically. Cool. Like, they're just stunning. There's metaphors. Like, you could really get a visual sense of, like, the different styles. Like, I feel like in a lot of, like, um, other cultivation-based anime books, sometimes it can be a little bit, like, more superficial. Yeah. More about the characters and story, and you really don't get into, like, the differences between sex or, like, how cultivation actually works or how you really, like, 
get better. Sometimes it's more focused on like, oh, like the, the super cool swords or like the super cool spells and not yeah. like really on like how are you like using your chi and how does like, how do people really like grow or sustain injuries or how does the core actually work? Yeah. Like this goes so into depth into it and it's really just absolutely described in such stunning detail. Cool. So I really do love that. Because I could see that also being something like boring if it wasn't done right. Yeah. Like it's not, it, like it could absolutely be described like a technical thing, but yeah. it's not. It's like absolute poetry and like cool. you really like feel like the connections that the characters have to this experience and like you really feel like the beauty and like like the vision of how they're like flying to the air and how they're fighting and it's like it's this grand epic larger than the scale like probably like the best like most poetic fight scenes cool. because of that That's right, so awesome. I really do like recommend it for that and also like I feel like if if people are reading Thousand Autumns and they really like the, some of the dynamics that appeared in this volume, they would probably really like Remnants of Filth. Oh, okay. Because that also has kind of personality fuckery and yes. those kinds of dynamics and like a lot of angsty backstory. So okay. I found some connections there as well, similarities. Nice. Yeah. Cool. That's what I have. Well, thank you so much, Stitch, for that, for our Dan Made Book Club. <laughs> If you guys liked this video and you'd like to hang out even more with Stitch and I, where we can hang out in the live chat and we watch episodes of Heaven Officials Blessing together, you can join my YouTube membership. You can click join down below to learn more about that, and it is a great way to help support my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye.